to be here uh, this morning. Um, you know, I have uh, a really great job, and for the next three and a half hours, I will explain to you all the in and outs of what I do. I'm not going to, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, so here, here's what I do. I, I, get, I get to work, and, uh, you know, my editor told me I had to start coming in earlier. So now I, I get in at noon, and, and, and so I get in at noon, and the first thing I do is I have lunch. And I have lunch, and so I'm sitting at my computer, and I'm looking at eBay, and you know, YouTube videos, and stuff like that. And, and because I have this thing, you know, I don't, I don't function until, like right now, you'll be able to tell, I'm just barely with it, because it takes me until like three o'clock before, before my mind really wakes up. So I, I sit at my computer, and to the untrained eye, it doesn't look like I'm doing anything, because I'm, I'm really not doing a whole lot. Uh, and so, but I, I'm writing down topics, and I'm going to various news websites. And so around three o'clock, I have this thing, I, I liken it to what they call a runner's high, you know, when, when a runner runs for a, certain, for a certain amount of time, some runners start feeling really good. Well, I get sort of a silliness high around three o'clock. So I can take these kind of serious topics and kind of twist them and, and come up with ideas, cartoon ideas. Now my, my deadline is 5.30, so around three o'clock, that's when I first start coming up with things because I'm starting to panic a little bit. You know, because I'm, because all day I've been procrastinating, uh, which I highly recommend, whether it comes to homework or whatever, procrastinate because it, it works for me. So I, so I, um, so I will wait until the last possible moment, and then I just start coming up with ideas, and and I'll come up with a couple, uh, maybe two or three, and I'll bring them out to an editor that I that I trust, and, and the the editor a lot of times will look at them and say, well, you know, those aren't very good. So I think. So I'll go back and I'll come up with some more ideas. And, and I really, that's another weird thing about me is that I like, I like being rejected because, because it forces me to come up with something better. So like if, you know, like if you're doing a, an art project and someone gives you critici criticism, you, know, you should look at it as a positive thing because it'll, it'll compel you to, to, to do something better. And so I'll, I'll, I'll go back to my office. And a lot of times it's like, you know, as I said, my deadline's 5.30, so it'll be like 5 o'clock, and I'll be thinking, oh, crap, you know, what the hell, what the heck am I going to do? And, and, and then, and then I'll, come on. but, you know, that, that real pressure, it'll just, I'll come up with something, and I'll, I'll, I'll run it out to my editor, and I'll, I'll get it approved, and so because I've wasted all, all this time procrastinating, I don't have very much time to draw, so what I do is I just draw you know, I'll, I'll, I do these little sketches that I show my editor, but when I do the final drawing, I don't pencil anything in first, I just ink. So I, I'm going really quickly, and a lot of times when I do a speech at night, uh, I'll give a speech and then I'll come home and I'll walk past a mirror, I'll have this white out down my face because I'm, I'm whiting out as I'm drawing, and, and, and so I have white out all over my fingers, and, and uh, it's one of the hazards of the job. So anyway, so I draw very quickly, and then I and, and then I uh, and I then I scan it into the computer and color it on Photoshop, and then and then uh, I put it into the, the system, and then I put it on Facebook, and, and it goes on Twitter, and it also I start putting my sketches on Instagram. So I, it's they're all over. So I you know I get people uh, criticizing me from all over the world now. So it's great. So listen, I'll show you some cartoons and. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then maybe do a drawing or something, although I forgot to bring paper. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, you all heard about those, uh, you know, those idiots uh, in, uh, in Oregon that, uh, that took that uh, uh, wildlife refuge, you know, they're occupying it, and uh, God, what morons. And they're, they're requesting snacks. You know, they didn't, they didn't think enough to, you know, pack a lot of stuff to eat while they were there. So, so, uh, 
so this is, so what I did is I brought some sketches to show you, and then and then I and then I'm going to show you the one that I I ended up uh, actually doing. So let's see if let's see if we can do this here. Okay, so okay, uh, so it's the Oregon Wildlife Sanctuary. We're hungry and against government tyranny. We should have occupied a Burger King. See, <laughs> and then I spelled militia here incorrectly because. So that was like my first. That was like my first idea. And and then so I I I, I drew up a, a list of these are the militia demands and. The guy saying, number one, stop laughing. <laughs> and then I was thinking, you know what? What if a what if a group of what if a group of African Americans, armed African Americans, had come in and occupied a federal government building? What would have happened? They would be, you know, it would have it would have been violence, I think. So I, the uh, Hemlock Society is is for people with terminal illnesses who wish to die by taking a poison. So this is the African American Hemlock Society. Uh, uh, this guy saying, it'll be over quickly, we'll occupy a federal building with toy guns. So this, this, is, this is the one that I ended up doing. I've got the, uh, the, the militia guys, they're saying, we'll occupy this federal facility until our demands are met. They're in a postal, they're in a mailbox. <laughs> Do y'all remember when that, uh, when that uh, dentist shot, what was that, Goliath Cecil? So I, I, this is the one that I did on that. This is, this is the original. Uh, and, my, and so the black and whites are my originals, which I scan in and then color uh, using Photoshop. So I've got, you know, the Tin Man, Dorothy Scarecrow, and the Cowardly Dentist there. This is... Uh, I, I like this one. This is on uh, guns. Uh, I don't know if you saw Obama's uh, talk yesterday. Um, this was after, I think, the San Bernardino shooting. And, you know, members of Congress do absolutely nothing. They actually block all attempts to do anything about, uh, you know, common sense gun, gun control. So I've got these members of Congress, and one of them saying, they're at a podium, enough's enough. We're doubling. We're doubling prayers for victims' families, initiating longer moments of silence, and allowing unlimited stuffed bears at makeshift shrines. So, they don't do anything. So, you know, I do all different topics. I especially like doing uh, cartoons on, on the environment. Uh, this is on uh, plastic trash overwhelming the oceans. Kids pointing out a bottlenose dolphin. You know, we're, we're supposed to be a country that welcomes people into it, but we've, we've really gotten kind of uh, uh, scared and kind of ugly when it comes to uh, people, you know, refugees that are trying to flee oppression or violence or war. So I've got refugees saying she, she's unfriending us. <laughs> this is uh, one, one thing that's really interesting about this election season is, you know, the, uh, we had the Citizens United uh, uh, ruling in the Supreme Court, which has allowed billionaires to kind of buy politicians. And so you have all these uh, billionaires, uh, uh, the Koch brothers, uh, Sheldon Adelson, all these people are choosing their favorite candidate to pour millions and millions of dollars into their campaigns. So uh, I did this cartoon. I've this rich guy saying, still deciding, keep twerking. <laughs> so remember uh, earlier, earlier in, uh, well, I guess it was mid-2015, uh, 
uh, Bruce Jenner became Caitlyn Jenner. So I was thinking uh, for, uh, of a good, I was trying to come up with a good way to do a cartoon on that. Uh, so he did a he did a Vanity Fair cover when he sort of revealed to the world his uh, his being female and he was dressed in a female bathing suit and things. So I, I did this cartoon. Uh, he's getting paid for his cover shoot. Here's here's seventy eight percent of what we pay guys. Yeah, the impact of being a woman. Now, to me this is insane, but. Uh, 43% of Republicans have been, when polled, say they believe that Obama is a Muslim, uh, which is which is silly. But so uh, so I've got Pope Francis is saying, America, there must be economic justice, immigration reform, and climate change action. And a cardinal saying, 43% of Republicans now say you're Muslim. <laughs> one of the one of the crazy things, at least in my opinion for this year, is the, the rise of Donald Trump. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, he's based his whole campaign on fear. Uh, you know, fear of Muslims and fear of uh, uh, Latinos. It's just, to me, it's silly. And, and so I did this cartoon. It says, white guys, had it, had it with scary minorities and Muslims? Get your very own Trump wall. So you get a big, beautiful dog door, four-sided security, locks from the inside, wall height huge. <laughs> and, it, and the costs, nothing, because you make a Mexican pay for it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh. And, and here is another, here is another huge turd. Uh, this is uh, this is a two-panel cartoon. Can't stand this guy. So in the first panel, uh, Bill Cosby is saying, uh, "Hey, sexy, hey, sexy, what's your name?" And then in the second panel, she's saying, "Karma." Now, you know, sometimes with a sometimes with a cartoon, you can do a cartoon, and and. You know, you can do some cartoon and it'll have a, a big impact, usually negatively. People get really PO'd about it. And, you know, I've had death threats and I've had people, you know, security people out in my backyard because people were so upset about a cartoon. But then sometimes you can do a cartoon and it'll have a, like a really, cool, a really cool thing will happen. So it was, you know, a few months ago and, I, and it was like five o'clock on a Wednesday, I believe. And, and I was doing a cartoon, and I almost had it done, and they and there was an announcement that Jimmy Carter had cancer. So I really liked Jimmy Carter, and so I, I thought, oh, geez, I, I really want to do a cartoon on that. But I was almost done with my cartoon that I was doing for the day. Uh, I had an early start on it, and, and so I, I kept thinking, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll just wait till tomorrow. I'll, I'll deal with that tomorrow. But then it just, it just kept bugging me. So... Really late, I, I scrapped the cartoon. I, I came up with an idea for the Carter thing. I ran it out to my editor and I said, hey, you know, can, can I do this one? And he said, okay, you know, just draw it really quickly. And so I, I drew it very quickly. And I drew the, the couple that I always draw. And they're uh, pounding in a, a campaign sign, Jimmy Carter for Cancer Survivor. And so this cartoon ran and then it uh, came out on social media, and people in Plains, Georgia saw it. And so uh, someone called me and said, hey, listen, can we make these campaign signs and, and, and then put them up, you know, so when Carter comes into town, you'll see them. So the day, do you remember it when he was giving his uh, talk at Emory, President Carter, he was doing a, a, a press conference about his cancer. So he had some treatment at Emory that day, and then that uh, evening, he was, he, they drove him and Rosalind back, back to Plains. So as he pulled into Plains, there were, there were 500 of these campaign posters in the lawns of people and in businesses as, as he pulled in. So, so, you know, he was totally surprised and he really liked it. He got out and he took a picture of it. So he sent me the picture that he had taken, plus a, a note about how much he, he loved the cartoon. It was such a sweet note, my wife cried. And it was really nice. 
So, so that was just one of the one of the nice things that you know you you do a cartoon and you don't realize sometimes what kind of impact it'll, it'll have. This one I did right before uh, uh, Christmas. It's <laughs> the, the three wise men have just completely missed the nativity scene. Uh, this is the Mark Rick cartoon that, uh, that uh, Ms. Ms. Klepper uh, uh, referenced. Uh, he's saying he followed me home uh, when, uh, oh God. And uh, so I did this one, and this also had a, had a big response. Uh, I was, uh, you know, people were uh, calling me for prints and things. And, and uh, so, you know, as I was telling Ms. Klepper, Whenever you draw a beloved, uh, like a sports coach and a dog in a cartoon, it's going to get a, a good reaction. So, you know, there were there were calls for, um, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the Confederate memorials. You know, after the Confederate flag came down, there were call, calls for Confederate memorials to be taken down, uh, including including Stone Mountain, and so so I did this cartoon. A compromise. Uh, Stonewall Jackson was re was replaced by Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, and and again, you know, Trump. Trump to me is such a he's like a, a cartoon character almost. I mean, after you know, after the Democrats debated and Hillary was late coming back because she was using the restroom. Uh, Trump said he thought that was disgust, disgusting, because you know women going to the bathroom—that's that's disgusting. Um, so he's kind of a pickish kind of person. So so I've got him being sworn in at his at his inaugural, and he's telling the Chief Justice he's going to come on pull it, pull his finger. All right, and and, th and this is uh, uh, today's uh, cartoon. Uh, this is again on. Uh, on those uh, those uh, idiots uh, uh, holding uh, occupying that federal building. So in the first panel, I've got a group of uh, law enforcement, and they're saying, uh, "Let's cut the power to the federal building so the armed kooks occupying it leave." And so in the second panel, you see it's, it's the Capitol, and, and NRA members are saying, "Who? Hey, who killed the lights?" All right, so anyways, see, don't I have a fun job? See, what I love about this job is that I get to do my favorite hobby, which is draw, uh, plus I don't have to go to meetings. That is, that is almost unheard of in, when you have a job. You know, my daughter who is uh, in marketing, you know, she's constantly in meetings. And I just say, oh man, I don't have to deal with that. So I'm very fortunate. Anyways, do do any all do any of you all have any questions? Not all at once. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that, very good. What's your name? Gigi. Well, that that is an excellent question. Yeah. Good job, Gigi. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it, it, um, oh yes, I'm sorry. Gigi asked, uh, did, the, did, the, did the Charlie Hebdo massacre in Paris, where those, I believe, 12 cartoonists were, were killed, did that change my approach or the way I view what I do? And, you know, it, it, I, thought, I think it personalized, uh, you know, what, what terrorism is all about. Uh, you know, you hear about terrorism or, you know, violence, uh, and, but it's always kind of removed. Uh, but this, you know, really felt personal because these people were basically doing the same type of thing that, that, that I do. Uh, but it really hasn't changed my approach. I, I you know, I still feel uh, that I, I really want to get my point of view out there and I'm not going to be intimidated by idiots with guns. Uh, it's just something, you know, you, it's just the, what we all have to, it's just the way the world is kind of. 
so I, you know, I just keep doing what I'm what I'm doing, and and uh, and then I just run to my car at night. Yeah, that's a good question. Someone was stretching. I don't think that's a question. Okay. Yes, sir. What's your name? Robert has a question. Okay. Uh, Robert, one, one, well, Robert's question is, uh, coming out of high school or college, did I know that I wanted to be a, a cartoonist? And uh, in high school, in high school, I was moved around a lot, uh, and, and I went to a Catholic high school for a while. Uh, and even in elementary school, I was always drawing. And so the, uh, when, when I go to a new elementary school, my dad was transferred in his job a lot. When I go to a new elementary school, even in fourth and fifth grade, I could I could look at the teacher and draw a caricature of her. It was usually a her, and and so I would draw this funny picture of the of the teacher, and I would then I would pass it around, and then I would have thirty new friends immediately, and and so it was always something that I just I I, I drew a lot, and it was always cartoons. I got into high school, I started to like politics, and and. Um, and I really loved Mad Magazine, so I drew for my school newspapers in high school, and uh, and and then in college I went to the University of Washington and drew for the Daily Paper there. But it wasn't like I was like a, a junior in college, and I was telling my girlfriend now wife, you know what? Geez, what am I going to do? You know, what am I going to do when I get out of school? And I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll get into social work or something. But I, I, you know, there was nothing I was really interested in. And cartooning was always something that I loved, but I never thought I could actually get a job doing it. It's like thinking you could become a major league baseball player. Um, although there's actually a lot more major league baseball players than there are editorial cartoonists. So, so, uh, so anyways, I, I, I graduated from college, and uh, my first job was selling life insurance because I, I couldn't find a job as a cartoonist. Um, and so I sold life insurance for a couple of years, and, and I hated that. But I eventually uh, got my first job in South Carolina. So to Robert, basically I always drew cartoons, but it wasn't until about uh, my senior year where I thought, oh man, this is what, I, this is what I'm going to try and do. But I couldn't get a job at first, and then eventually I did. I went to Greenville, uh, the Greenville News, and then uh, New Orleans Times Picayune, and then I've been here since, uh, 1980, since 1980. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, you're, yeah, you. Um, you have a favorite? Say what? Oh, do I have a favorite? Huh. You know, you know that's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, pretty much my favorite is always, always the one that I have just drawn because I'm focused on that and if I like it, and, 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 then, I, and, then, I'll, and then I'll just, I'll go to the next one. I'll forget the one that I've just done. So I'm always really focused on the, the one that I'm currently working on. But I think if I had a, if I had to choose one overall, uh, one of my favorites would be uh, during the Iraq War uh, when we were about to lose our 2,000 troops. Uh, I drew a cartoon. It, it was just the word with the word Y W H Y. But I wrote all the names of all the troops in those three letters. Uh, so, and then, uh, there, then there was a little question mark at the end because I still don't understand why we went into uh, Iraq at that time. So at that time, it was like a big deal because a lot of people still supported the war. I think we went on to lose like four or five thousand troops. So it was like midway, and so. Uh, so it went online, and it, it caused a big, uh, you know, a lot of pro, pro and con uh, back and forth with people, which, which is all I want to do is just to get people thinking about things. So but that's, that was one of my favorite. Of course, that wasn't funny, and I really like using humor, but sometimes you just, you just can't use humor. Here, I'll show you one, one other here that um, I know I have back here somewhere. So this is this is the one. Um, how much time should I talk? 
Okay. Okay, so uh, five more minutes. Are we all awake? Okay. Okay, so so uh, you know when uh, when nine eleven happened, I was at home with our with our uh, new baby who is now going to be fifteen on uh, Monday. Uh, but uh, so we, I was home at her with her and my wife watching CNN, saw those towers go down. And so you know when something like that happens, you know you know you, that, that it's really important. You want to do the best drawing that you know that you can. So I I drove into to the paper. And I sat all day, not not looking at eBay, eBay that day. I was really trying from the moment I got in the door to, to come up with a with with the best cartoon I could do. And it got late in the day, and I I was running out of time, so I, I had to do a, 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 this car, the cartoon that I ended up doing. But I wasn't happy uh, about it. And I remember my editor when he came in to see what I was doing. Uh, I could feel my face getting red because I was embarrassed about it. But I drew the cartoon, and I always bring my, a, a copy of, car of my cartoon home to show my wife because if she likes it, it's always like a relief. Because I lose my my uh, objectivity when I look at a cartoon, and I can't. After a while, I can't tell if it's any good or if it stinks. And so if she likes it, it's it's always so great. But if she doesn't, it's like oh my god. I've got to redeem myself. So she liked this one. So that made me feel made me feel better. So this is the cartoon that I, I drew. Let's see. Uh, so you can see uh, in the Statue of Liberty's eyes, uh, the uh, the plane's about to hit the, the the World Trade. The plane about to hit the first World Trade Center. And so after this cartoon ran, uh, the paper was getting a lot of uh, uh, people. Uh, People liked it, and so uh, there, there was people were calling, requesting copies of it. So the paper uh, had like I don't know thousands of these things made it blew, blown up into poster size, and then Kroger, uh, Metro Kroger, sold them uh, at their at, Kroger, at their stores uh, to benefit uh, 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 you know victims' families of 9/11. So it turned out to be a, a really a, a a great thing. Uh, the reason why I initially didn't like it was because, you know, I felt like everyone else when the when the towers went down. I was I was you know horrified. I was angry. Uh, uh, you know, saddened. So I had all these conflicting emotions, and I wanted to put them all in, in one single cartoon. And because it's a single image, you just can't really put everything that you're feeling into one one drawing. Uh, so that's why I felt like it wasn't very good. But but then, you know, upon reflection, I realized that you know it's probably the best. You know, it's probably the best I could have done. So, uh, in anywho, on that on that happy note, uh, I enjoyed speaking with you all. Thank you for your questions, especially Gigi's question, which was especially good. So, thank you all so much.